What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update, and it is transfer deadline week. The window slammed shut on Friday night, 11 p.m., and a lot of business left to do. So let's start off talking about some incomings. And uh, Sky Sports Lyle says that Tottenham want to sign a wide forward before the end of the window and have identified three targets. Brendan Johnson is one with whom they are in talks to sign. Anzu Fati and Johan Bakayoko are the other wide targets. And Tottenham want to bring in a right-sided forward regardless of outgoings this regardless window. Regardless of outgoings, that's interesting. Because, you, uh, you know, the narrative has been so far we need to get rid of players. So maybe, but it depends, I guess, um, if the... Out if the incoming is a young player who doesn't have to be technically registered if he's under 20 or, or under 21, sorry. But look, that's good news. And I think it makes sense to get to get a player who can f kind of fill in both roles because we have a couple of players who can play centrally, like Richarlison and so on. Obviously, we have a lot of wide players, but most of them can play on the left. So I think signing a player who's versatile probably makes the most sense um, right now. But then, but unfortunately, it probably rules out uh, Gift Orban. Yeah, and we'll get into uh, Gift Orban in a minute, but let's uh, focus on Brennan Johnson as Fabrizio Romano says that Tottenham prepared to approach Nottingham Forest for Brennan Johnson this week Postacoglu has already approved this potential move not an easy deal as Forest have already rejected big proposals but interest in Brennan is growing now Ali Gold says that under he understands that Ange Postacoglu has made Brennan Johnson his number one attacking target for these final days of the window feels he's the perfect fit for his Spurs system and versatile talks have taken place tough deal to do though and it's likely to be one that happens um, to be late um, if it happens and Paul O'Keefe says that Tottenham and Forest are now in direct contact to see if a deal can be reached for Brennan Johnson there is a possibility Sanchez could be used in any deal but it's early stages in talks I mean why is it early stages in talks at 28th of August <laughs> yeah how Spurs do things usually but look when it comes to Forest apparently I read somewhere as well there's a FFP um, concerns for them, which is part of the reason why... They did sign a million players. Yeah, exactly. So it's part of the reason why they may be more willing to do a deal than you would imagine, because obviously he's one of their main mm. players. And without him, you know, I'm looking at their squad, and I, I know Aoyoni's doing well, and Morgan gibbs White's a good player, but without that threat of Johnson, I mean, if they don't replace him, I can really see them struggling to stay in the league. Um, so you've got to think they're going to fight two for Nell to try and keep him. But if they do have serious financial concerns then i guess they might have no option but but to agree deal with us I, for me it's an exciting deal i'm not like crazy over him but i do think he's a good player and i do think he hopefully could show even more in a tottenham shirt that he currently does in a forest shirt i do like him in both positions uh, on the wing or up front and i'm and that excites me that he can fill in in both areas although i do have my concerns of him in both uh, in both positions but look he's still young he's still uh, what 21 22. 22 yeah he's still like develop he's only had one season in the premier league you got to remember as well in the championship uh two seasons ago he was absolutely a goal and assist machine so i know he hasn't that hasn't completely translated into the premier league straight away but he still did have you know got um in double figures in goal contributions last season in the Premier League. So I do think it's, it will be a very good signing for Tottenham. And I, I, I hope, with the hope that he can really start to develop as a player and, and get even better at, um, you know, taking people on in his finishing ability. Yeah, it's 18 goals in the championship two years ago as a 20-year-old. The season after in the Premier League, he got eight goals, which is more than Kulisevsky, more than Richarlison, more than most of our uh, front players pulled up last year, apart from Kane and Son. And um, last year as well, he clocked up the fastest speed um, out of everyone in the Premier League, apart from Kyle Walker. He was the only player that was faster than him last year. And I think he's a player that Ange Postacoglu will love. I think he'll be able to mould him even more into a player that he wants him to be. And I think he's got a lot more to give than what he's shown already as well. So I like Brennan Johnson. I know maybe the data doesn't suggest, you know, he's going to be one of the, the best wingers, but... At his age and the number he's, numbers he's produced so far in a Nottingham Forest shirt, I think Spurs fans should be excited about this one. Yeah. Uh, wh where do you see his best position, up front or on the right? Probably on the right to start off with, to be honest. I think that uh, with his speed and I think his ability, and maybe we haven't seen it consistently so far for Nottingham Forest, but I think he can grow in this uh, sector with his um, ability to take on his man and really get good crosses in the box. I think probably start off on the right and then it's a good option to have if Richarlison's not hitting the heights. Um, and I don't know, I prefer to see Sonny through the middle than Brennan Johnson. What I like about the Johnson signing as well, gives us a different option um, of a winger who can 
literally who can go on the outside and get crosses in that way rather than having Kulusevski always cutting inside. Obviously, I, I'm like Kulusevski, but it just gives us more variety. It makes us more unpredictable. And I really like that. Yeah, totally agree. Let's talk about Gift Orban now. And Sky Lyle says that Gift Orban to Spurs is looking unlikely. Tottenham look to be moving for a wide player rather than a striker. And this one really frustrates me because like... Regardless of bringing in gift, um, bringing in Brendan Johnson, if you want to bring him or a wide player, we should be going for him as well. I mean, this guy could be a top, top talent um, going in over the next couple of years. And I genuinely believe if we don't sign him now, he's going to go to someone like Brighton, Dortmund, Napoli, one of these teams. And we're going to see him with a value of about 80 to 100 million in a couple of years time. Yeah, it looks like we've, we're going to miss the boat on him, which is a shame because it seems as though we've got a really good opportunity to just get him through the door for a fairly modest fee um, in, in this current market terms, especially considering how he's looking in the moment with his goal scoring record. And obviously we're, we're in need of a striker because with Harry Kane leaving, albeit you know we have Richarlison there, Son can play there and it looks like we're going to sign up. We're looking for a player who can play in both the wide and the forward position. So the fact that Gift Orban is predominantly a striker, I guess in a weird way works against him um, when, when we're looking for recruitment. It is a shame in my opinion. It's, it's something it's something that we might look back on in a year's time and think we've it was a massive regret and we should have just um, taken the opportunity when it was handed to us to get him through the door. But it seems as though we're going to let it pass us up, pass us by and I've, it's a shame. I've just got a feeling this is just going to be another Kavisha situation or Kim Min Jae situation in know one of these kind of players that just go on and just absolutely explode after we li we've linked with them and if you're looking at the data itself we're going for a data-led approach i think the data looks a lot better for Orban than it does for johnson so um look is what it is i'm not gonna cry about it but it's just a bit uh, frustrating that um it's, it seems like a good opportunity that we're just passing up yeah um and another striker that we've been linked with is megrim barisha of augsburg and pletty uh, says that Tottenham are interested in Augsburg forward Megrin Barisha. Don't know much about him, to be honest. Do you know it, not much no, about him? No, I know a Barisha. I'm thinking of a different Barisha, though. So I, I don't know the one for Augsburg. I knew one that was playing in Serie A once, but Let's get his stats uh, I'm up not in. sure what he's. Uh, where where does he play? Augsburg. No, he's in position. Forward. Striker. Striker. So if we're, if we're going for a striker, why wouldn't we go for Orban? Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, if I understand, if you're recruitment-wise, if you're looking, if you're saying Orban, look, he's only a striker. We would rather someone. We would prefer to sign a versatile forward who can also cover the wing. Then I can kind of, I can, I kind of get it as much as it's frustrating. But if you're also going to look at another player who only plays up front and who's playing in the Bundesliga then why not just go for Orban? I mean, it says he's a forward here. 23 goals, I mean, 23 appearances, nine goals, four assists last year, 25 wow. years of age. Um, played against Bayern Munich last night and just seeing what position he played. Yeah, he played up front, in the front two. So, I mean, it's not one that fills me with any sort of hope or confidence six foot one so he's a fairly tall player i don't i don't know i mean i'm looking at the data now it's not great but there's obviously uh, you have to I haven't really spent a long time looking into it but look it's not bad goal to, nine goals four assists in 23 games in the bundesliga that's not a terrible return but at, um i don't know but Orban just seems like a seems like the one who looks special i had nothing Scream special at the moment about this guy but look i've only literally spent a few seconds looking yeah. into him, so. <laughs> Harsh. but yeah i mean I, I don't really imagine anything happens with this one anyway uh, to be honest um pletty pletty oh god <laughs> nah. um let's talk about tosin adorabayo now as romano says that fulham center back adorabayo has trained separately yesterday as club prepare for his departure tosin informed the club of his intentions to leave and monaco have reopened talks with fulham now hoping to agree a deal in the next 48 hours as talks continue so it looks as though nothing's really happening with spurs and tosin yeah it's gone very quiet when it comes to tottenham's interest in tosin it seems like no one's really reporting anymore <laughs> that Maybe because he just doesn't want to join us yeah i mean that, that's been the main report so but then again we haven't really heard about any other center backs Pershers. Uh, we've heard of Pershers, but that's gone very quiet as well like there's nothing like the brendan johnson deal seems to be really heating up maybe he's just seen van de ven he's like oh he's gonna be fit for the whole season we don't need another one but we clearly do especially i guess i guess uh what how i see it um at the moment is we're gonna bring a wide forward in regardless of outgoings and maybe we're waiting for outgoings in the center back um slots to start moving in that situation potentially. yeah and look we'll get into the potential outgoings in a second but 
with the we've got a rumored list of three center backs going out so you'd think like if three do go out we need to bring in at least two before the end of the window yeah you, um oh for sure I, th I i have a feeling it'll be i've just got a feeling it's gonna be one and one one will go and oh sorry two will go tanganga and sanchez and then one will come in mm. and die is gonna stay but in terms of outgoing paul o'keefe um said today that tottenham's potential outgoings this week include Lloris, spence reggie Sanchez, Tanganga, Hoybier, Hill, Undombele, and then he says that it'd be interesting to see how many they can move on or if they can receive any bids for any unexpected ones like Geo. So if I was to ask you to make a prediction of how many of these players do you think are going to leave by from now until the end of the window, how many do you think it would be? I would say Spence is going to go. Um, I would say Loris is definitely going to go. I think Ndombele will find somewhere. I think he's definitely going to go. I got a feeling a loan deal for Tanganga somewhere, so that's four. Um, and there's left. There's uh, Hill, Hoybier, and Tanganga. No, you said Tanganga, Tanganga. Sanchez, Sanchez, and Dyer. Sanchez, I think. Sorry, Sanchez. I think it's going to go. I reckon. I reckon he'll. We'll find. Uh, either he'll be used in part exchange or something, or he'll find another club. Um, I reckon Hoybier staying. I reckon Hill staying. Um, so that's a what five? I'm reckoning five. You five said Laurie, Spence, Reggie, Sanchez. Oh, Tanganga. Reggie as well. I reckon Reggie will go. So that's six. Six. Six of the what? Six of the. I think that would be super impressive if we could get six out from now until the end. Is that, is that six? Yeah. Yeah, it is so. six. Yeah, yeah, six. Um, I think yeah, but that, I think it all makes sense. Them, them, them finding homes. I think Hill's going to stay. I don't think anyone's coming in for him, and I can't see Hoybier at this point leaving. Um, I think it's too complicated, and we're going to want too much money. In terms of any surprises, he's saying um, he was saying about potentially Geo. I think. I still think there's a chance someone comes in for Geo, but whether it's whether it's a deal that works for us, I don't, I don't think that, so. That, 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 I, I don't think, think. I think someone comes in and tries to. Re regardless, if they come in, I don't think we let them go because we need um, creative options there in the middle. And without without him, and if Madison gets injured, we're there, we're out on our, our knees a little bit. Mm. So I don't think we let him go. It depends. It depends on the deal. I think. Even even on the deal, we're not going to leave ourselves short. I don't think. If we're not letting him go on loan, I agree with that. But if, if we get a good fee for him, I can see us letting him go. Only if we could get a replacement in. I don't. Mm. I don't see us letting him go just um, just because we get a good deal. I think if we get a re if we can line up a replacement, then yeah. But if we can't, then we're just leaving ourselves short. So there's not much point letting him go. I agree, but I can. I think we would. I think we would sell him if if a good fee comes in. I think we would sell him. Uh, I disagree, but let's move on. Um, let's talk about Jaffet Tanganga. Romano says that Tanganga's future is very open situation. He's not an option for Inter, not a priority at all. Clubs like Everton and Luton have asked for the conditions of the deal around two weeks ago, but nothing has happened yet. Nothing's concrete, and it's very likely that he will leave Spurs before the window shuts. So uh, Tanganga, uh, Romano saying it's very likely he's going to go. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. And we It'd know... Be a good pickup for Luton, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, still a lot of talk about Tanganga, but still no movement at the moment. It's, it doesn't seem to be very close to leaving as of yet in terms of like any being in advance talks with anyone. But I think Luton, it would be a very good signing for them. And uh, they look, I've been watching them first couple of games. They did definitely need some reinforcements. So I think um, Tanganga makes sense for them. Yeah. In terms of Eric Dyer, Sky Sports Lyle says that Tottenham have put Eric Dyer up a sale Fulham are interested in Dyer, and if he was to leave he'd prefer to go on loan as he sees better potential and leaving as a free agent next year do you see that Fulham potentially putting in a loan boo for Eric loan Dyer move. I mean from Tottenham's point of view um I mean what, would a loan fee make sense I just just get a fee I guess and get, of course get it rid would. of him 100 percent um, makes sense because but then you're letting him go on a free you'd rather a permanent wouldn't you of course you'd rather a permanent but beggars can't be choosers here and Eric and no one's uh maybe open to uh letting first of all Eric Dyer wants to go on loan so he gets the free transfer and a big signing on bonus no one is going to part with any sort of significant money for Eric Dyer anyway so in my opinion with only one year left in this deal you just if you if you loan him out now, you're pretty much saying you're cutting ties. Um, selling him. Yeah. So whatever. It doesn't make a difference to me if you get a, a transfer fee in. Just get him out of the club is is first and foremost for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm not against that 100. percent If we can get a loan deal, I'm just wondering how the club uh, see it. Whether they whether whether they accept the loan deal or um, or they'd rather wait for a, try and get him out permanently. And and if not, just keep him. I I mean, I hope not. 
I would rather loan him out. I hope the club loan him out if, if, if the opportunity arises. I just got a feeling he's going to stay. But if they don't loan him out, they're not going to get a transfer fee in from now until the end of the window. Let's say, for argument's sake, they don't. So, I mean, you're just having him stick around here and paying his wages anyway. You may as well send him out on loan, get the wages off the book or a, a big percentage of wages off the book. And then he just goes for free at the end of the year. Yeah, I hope so. I hope that happens. I really do. And... Um... It makes no sense to keep him around. Yeah, like, me, no agree. sense whatsoever. I agree. I don't want him to stay. I don't want him here in the squad anymore. Like, he hasn't been in any squad so far, not even on the bench. So it shows you where the manager thinks of him. 100%. But uh, I'm hearing he's still digging his heels in at the moment, Dyer. Mm. But that's why I think a loan move is perfect because it, it removes that thing of him digging his heels in because he's out of the club. Mm. And then there's nowhere to come back to because his contract will be up. Yeah, let's hope we can find a solution for him for the end of the window. Uh, Tangi and Dombele Lequip saying that Galatasaray are in talks for Tottenham Hotspur midfielder Tangi and Dombele having not appeared for Spurs so far this season. And Dombele hopes to find a base to play. Um, I mean, we've heard these Galatasaray Fenerbahce rumours about Tangi and Dombele pretty much all summer, mm -hmm. but, and we've also heard that he doesn't want to go to Turkey. Yeah. So I mean, I don't get why this keeps propping up. Uh, maybe they're just keep they're not giving up on the deal, and hopefully that um, Tangi can be persuaded to to go there right now. I can't see them signing him permanently. It's probably going to have to be another loan deal, to be honest, at this rate, considering how close it is to the end of the window. Postecoglou was actually talking about him in his um, in bar in the press conference before the, for the Fulham game, and he was saying how you know Tongi is currently in the squad, not in the squad, in the you know training with the team and he's training hard. But you know midfield is the most competitive area at the moment we have in the squad, and we have five players you know that we need to get rid of because the squad's too big, and he's kind of in that camp at the moment. So look, he's making it pretty clear where. Tangi stands right now um, he's not part of the plans and I think if look if it, hopefully Tangi can realize it's better to be going to uh, Turkey than not playing at all and if that's the only option maybe w when it, if it comes a bit like a desperate situation when once the window starts ticking down maybe he'll soften his stance yeah let's hope so man I mean it's been a long time coming a long time coming and even so it'll probably only be a loan deal so we'll see him back here next summer as well um, next up let's talk about Jed Spence Sky Sports Lyle saying that a French club are interested in Jed Spence which puts a move to Leeds in jeopardy but the offers is still there uh, many championship clubs are interested so you do imagine something will get done by the end of the window yeah I'm surprised no Premier League club is really interested especially Forrest I wouldn't I w I'm gonna be I would be shocked if a deal is done for Johnson and enough and they don't look at Spence to try and get him back the other way I would be very surprised but if I'm Spence I'd very much prefer a move to a top club in or what were well, sorry a first division team in France and go back down to the championship because that's a bit of bigger test of his abilities and I think that's where he needs to be at he's always been in the championship and he's done very well but I don't think he it helps him too much um, going down a level so I think if it's a choice between going to the championship in France I think he goes France um, yeah, I probably agree with that. And Davinson Sanchez, James Nursery from the Mirror saying that Tottenham defender Davinson Sanchez to Nottingham Forest is a potential deal to look out for before the deadline. Last season, Sanchez was involved in 24 matches and racked up 1,300 minutes. Um, look, I think we've spoken about this so much. I think like if you can use him as a make weight in a Brendan Johnson deal, I'd be up for it. But I will just so much prefer to let those other two defenders go before we let Sanchez go. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if we need to bring one in, we need to let people go. And if, if Sanchez is the only one we're getting offers for, then so be it. He has to go and so we can bring one in. Let's just hope we have someone lined up. For, for, for that eventuality if they, if Sanchez does look like he's leaving we need to make sure that we, we're not um, risking losing out on our, that centre-back target that we can bring in but if we leave it too late that's the only worry yeah the honest truth yeah I'd actually prefer to see like Dorrington and, and Phillips kind of come in before Dyer and not probably not Tanganga but definitely Dyer for sure and I think like I was watching highlights of the under 23s this weekend and i promise you at dorrington looks like a proper proper player ball playing ability charging out from the back i mean he he looks serious and, and there's a few actually in there that look serious that jamie donnelly looks like a bloody harry kane regen that dorrington looked like he was a level above everyone else yeah. on that pitch he was yeah. like physically as well so i don't know how old he is is he 18 i think he's uh i think he's a bit older than 18. let me just check but he looks he definitely looks like he's ready for, to, to step out of, of the youth game at the moment and maybe hopefully we can find a loan move for him 
or something. He's eighteen. He is eighteen. He looks like looks like a really special. Looks physical talent. as yeah, well, exactly. doesn't he? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and um, he looks like a level above. I was and a few of those here, like Jamie Donnelly. I don't know if you saw his individual highlights of the game. But I mean, Jesus, the passing that he was showing in that game was just literally Harry Kane-esque. Mm, a lot of talk about Donnelly as well. Yeah. But let's move on and let's finish on talking about Sergio Reguilon as Jamie Jackson from The Guardian saying any deal for Tottenham defender Sergio Reguilon to Manchester United would probably be on a temporary basis, yeah. which is uh, no surprise with what they're going through with Luke Shaw's injury at the moment. And they only want really cover for Luke Shaw uh, because he's injured. So it makes sense. And I think it suits all parties probably. Yeah, yeah. Just again, he doesn't look like he's part of the plans. I actually don't like. I think Regulon would probably be an okay signing for uh, Man United. On, like you could do a lot worse than Regulon as a as a fill in. And obviously, he's seen his move to Sociedad fall through because Tierney has taken that that spot. So he ain't going to Sociedad any anytime soon. So I. <laughs> It, yeah, I guess it just it will just come down to whether Tottenham are willing to deal with Man United. That's what it's going to come down to. And if they are, I think this deal can get done. But again, Man United also look at Cucurella. And I actually think Cucurella would be an even better signing for them. So. Another name in the list as well, which is Marcus Alonso. And Marcus Alonso. So again, it's, it's not a good, complete foregone conclusion. But I think if Tottenham can... I, look, I'd obviously rather a permanent deal somewhere. But if it's only a loan deal... And I think Reglon could see it as an opportunity as well to go to a club like Man United and try and show something that, you know, he's not able to show at Tottenham. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. That is where we're at with not long to go of the window. We're currently on Monday lunchtime and Friday night is the deadline. So hopefully we'll see a lot of movement from now until the end of the window. And Postakoglu did say it's going to be a fun week. So keep yourself strapped in and let's see where we go. But thank you everyone for joining us today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs.